Good afternoon, everyone. It's June 16, 2023, 12.51 in the afternoon, and just going to be doing a recap. So for today, it was a struggle in the morning just because there's not a lot of follow through in the morning. In the morning, what we see the SPY had been doing was a little bit of a pullback. So in the morning, what the SPY did was it, see right here, it opened right here at 442, and then you had the flush tested 440 so that one was two dollars move and then now heading back up so we're up by 0.28 percent with the spy but if you look at the 30 minutes chart of spy just bunch of consolidation there so with bunch of consolidation that is the day that you have or an inside bar that is the day that you have to be very careful because that can be a day where there's not a lot of follow through and that's what i have experienced when trading today and that's the reason why it took me a long time to dig myself out of the hole as well as to finally have those reversal. So the trades that I did today were a bunch of reversals just because at the open, it already moved without me. So once the stock moved without you, there's no reason to chase it. The only way to make yourself profitable is to wait for that setup. So what I saw, let's just go here in order. What I saw with Apple, let me switch it to 15 minutes because this is the time frame that I was using. All right, what I saw with Apple is this is yesterday's closing price. It opened right here, 186, popped to 187, had a sell off right here, just like the rest of the stocks. You have your S3 right here acting as a resistance right here. But at this level, this is the third candlestick. So that is 15, 15, that's 45 minutes in after the market opens. We have this S3 acting as a support. And that's the time that I went long on that level. And that is about to break this previous candlestick is high. So I went long there, added to my position, and the stop loss is just <clears throat> below this candlestick. And we had that little bit of a pop. This is yesterday's closing price. When I saw that yesterday's closing price is acting as a strong ceiling or a strong resistance, that's the time that I just trailed my stop. So moving my stop loss above my break even and just trailing it. And I got stop out right there, which is the reason why it's very important to put in your stop loss because you look at this massive dump right here. If I did not put my stop loss right here, I could have just been at break even. And after that, it was just so choppy and just with that consolidation. So I did not touch Apple right after that first trade. It was just too choppy for me and no trades to take when it's choppy. Next one is AI. AI, I did have to dig myself out of the hole in AI just because here is the trade that I did. So same thing with Apple at the open, it went so strong. So this is part of the gap up list right there. So it opened right here, touch 49. And then once it touched 49, then we did find a rejection right there. Tested yesterday's closing price, had a pop and then have that yesterday's closing price again as a resistance. When that happened, same thing with what Apple had been doing. I thought it will have that yesterday's closing price as a support. So what I did was I long it there. Now the stop loss, just because the week is too long, I have my stop loss at this previous candlesticks uh, body and I got stop out right there. And then let's see here, AI. So AI was just a long couple of stops with AI. I entered again in this candlestick. If I switch it up to five minutes. Okay, so this one was the stop out. I entered again because we have that surge of buyers in. I entered there, was able to catch that little bit of a move, but not a lot of move there. So long and all out. Now this one, we're forming a double bottom. So I went long again and I got stop out. So this is the mess right here. And then we have tested, then we now form a new low of the day. That new low of the day looks like it is acting as a support there, looking at SPY. SPY is trending higher as well at that time. So I went long, trailing my stop, and was all out right here. Once I get all out, I was still at the red at AI because of this couple of stubs right here, most especially when I tried to long it here and I capitalized my share, and that was a big loss right there. So got stop out here. So that's okay. Um, the next thing that I see was we broke S3. So that acted now as a ceiling. So now that ceiling or a resistance, what I saw was we are forming this hammer. So once we formed that hammer, search of buyers came in. That's why we have that wick entered long here. Now what I did was building up my position. S3 here. I entered long again. So added to my position. Now stop loss here. I gave it some room for this to go just because I got stop out here 
just because I'm having a tight stop loss. So once I have a wider stop loss, and what I did was just keep building to my position. So small position at the time. This one, just profit takers, those who were long here, have a little bit of a pop. That little bit of a pop, we are testing the S3 again, added to my position, added to my position. Now, what I notice here is this is actually forming a higher high, higher low. So you see this, that one is a trend. So what I did is added to my position again at that little bit of selling. So once I have built my position right here, that's the time that it pop. And we have the moving average there. We have the high of that trend right here. So I started to have partial right there. And right after I partial, I just moved my stop loss higher than my break even. And if you can imagine here, since I've been adding here at the bottom, adding here. So my break even here is still at this level. So at this partial right here, that is profit taking, moving my stop loss higher than my break even. Even if I get stop out, that is still a profit. So was able to dig myself out of the hole in this lost because I was able to manage my risk. I was able to add in to that little bit of a move. And since I needed to add to that little bit of a move, the reason why I did that is I'm not really confident about this AI trade. So for me to manage my risk, I have to start with small position, small position, adding to small position, building it up. So the way that traders manage their risk is you don't want to go into a trade with a big or just one bulky order of your position. You want to build up to your position. If there's a C, if you see, if there's a confirmation that stocks is strong enough through your stack of ass right here, your print in uh, tape, your moving average here is what I've been looking at is the Camarilla pivot point, your S3. So since I do have those confirmation, that's the time to add. And sure enough, with that little bit of a move, was able to come out profitable there, 526, dig myself out of the hole here because I have added to those position and I make sure that I do have the stop loss right there, give it some room to go because this is the time where it's consolidating. Now, how can you minimize getting stop out on a trade? You can minimize getting stop out on a trade when you silence the noise by going to a higher time frame. So for this one, if you can see there, there's a bunch of consolidation there. If you switch it up to a higher time frame, you'll see here, and this is the time that I keep adding because yeah, I entered long here. Confirmation, we do have that first looking like a doji white candlestick that's the time that i add it tested it did not even was it did not even tested the low of this candlestick so that's the time that i added there and then it tested again the low of this candlestick that's the time that i added and all out right here so that's the way to silence those noise switch it up to a higher time frame as well as do not enter a trade most especially if the probability of the trade is not high on going to your prediction enter in a small portion and then build build up your position once you get to see the confirmation confirmation in the bid asks as well as the tape printing as well as how the order flow looks like is there a massive buying once you see that it's touching those support so those are the things that i'm waiting for next one is amd amd got me into a red as well and this is the reason why i was telling uh during my um earlier that it is a hard trading day because there's a lot of fake out. So for instance, this AMD along with SPY and Apple had opened pretty strong. So it opened around 125 over 75. So that's a gap up right there because yesterday it closes at 124.25. And as soon as it opened right there, boom, it just had that massive, massive sell off at the S4, kind of caught, caught, trying to catch this one and trying to see a reversal premature reversal i paid for that so i went long stop out long again here building to my position and got stopped out now with this building up with the position there's pros and cons in building your position pros is um you know you get to um make a big profit if it goes in your direction but if it doesn't then that will make a big loss and that one was the big loss right here so i tried to let's see here couple of stabs to the long so this one step out this one able to catch a little bit to the long able to catch a little bit to the long but you see here i've been trying to do some reversal there as well some stop out there reversal stop out again and the big move that i was able to capture here and this is the time that i step away from my desk for a while because i'm not able to capture any movements at all 
And that means the SPY as well as the other stocks are just not, it's not time yet for this reversal to happen. So the advice that I can give you is when you see that you are affected with your uh, profit and loss, you see that, you know, you might be on the verge of doing an overtrading. You're not able to to read the stocks that clearly. It's okay to step out or it's okay to um, walk away for a moment from your trading desk and come back fresh. So that's what I did. And that's what I mentioned that, yeah, I'll have to wait for the prof proper setup first. So at this time, 11.45, this is the first candlestick. Now I switched it up, switched it up to 15 minutes. So with the 15 minutes, what I saw was we do have that first white candlestick. I entered long. This is the time that I really had to be patient as well as was able to monetize on that move with the adding to my position. So entered long, added to my position. We got a little bit of a pullback. My stop loss is right here. Very tight stop loss there. But it did not even touch that stop loss and it did not stop me out. So I added to my position, added to my position as well right here. So here, just like AI, I was starting to build up a position. Entered long, added to my position, added to my position, added to my position. Now we are in this consolidation, right? So with that consolidation, I already added four times to my position. Now, what it was the last long or add to my position did I do? The last adding to my position was when this one was about to break this consolidation. It was about to break that consolidation. Want to make sure that I get to uh, monetize on that even minute move because there's just no follow through. And that's what I learned in today's high section. There's no follow through for this one to have a big V reversal. So you have to be adjustable on what the market is giving you. Before we used to see like, okay, reversal like that, reversal like this. But what we can see now is there's no V reversal happening. What's happening is you have a sell off right here, a little bit of a move, a little bit of consolidation, a little bit of a pop. So even with this little bit of a pop right here, which is this end right here, was able to dig myself out of the hole with this just because I added to my position, added to my position, added, added, added. And that moving average acting as a strong resistance or ceiling. And I just was trailing my stop and that stopped me out, which was totally um, cool because once I got stopped out, then that just went all the way down. So with that, was able to get 994. Again, not an easy trade because I did have to dig myself out of the hole there. Next one is Amazon. Amazon is a short here. I only have two shorts, which is Amazon as well as Tesla. Um, Amazon, I went long as well and as well as short. So let's look at the short. Short one, I just have a small position. What I saw was same thing, just like what a Apple, AMD did. Open very strong and then boom, massive sell off after the sell off. What it looks like is we are having that white candlestick. The way it looks like in the five minutes is this. So the trigger point here to go long was you have the sell off, you have the first white candlestick. So it looks like a reversal there, went long, stop loss there is just below the body of this candlestick. Did not want to use the wick because it's too big of a body of this candlestick already and it got stopped out. First trade, red trade. So move on when that happens. As long as you manage your risk, you should be okay. Next one, you have the yesterday's closing price at this level. What I saw here was you have sell off, got a little bit of a move there, did not get to test the high of the day. If you see it right here, it's almost like in the middle of the move. I usually don't touch that, but not, there's no A plus setup today. So since I usually don't touch that, that means this is not an A plus setup. So if that's not an A plus setup, lower, lowering my risk means lowering my position size. So what I saw is this one, of course, this is the top high of the day, but big rejection at 127.3. Tested that again with this candlestick. First white candlestick right there. At the low of the body of this candlestick, I went short, added to my position because we're now heading below the wick of this candlestick, trailing my stop got me stop out. And that's the frustrating thing about today. There's no clean setup that it's just going to be going, going down, like clean enough for you to catch that move. What it did was retest that level and then boom. So even if it moved right here, did not catch that only caught this move right here. 
So that one was a very small move to the short. I did add to my position. So with that, I got for the short 140. But it's frustrating when you're in the middle of the trade. You're like struggling to catch those moves. There's no V reversal happening. V reversal are the fun trade because you get like a hammer right here. You go long and you see, you know, it happens. And this one, if you have inverted hammer, you showed it right here and it goes back down. Those are the clean move. What we saw today is not a clean move. Get me stop out. And of course, I don't have an edge now to re-enter this trade. So I just let it go. So that is the short trade. Now for the long trade, what I saw here is this is the low of the day. Consolidation right here. You have the S3. And you have a bunch of consolidation right here. So this level right here was tested a couple of times. So with that test, a couple of testing there, I went long at the high of or at the top of this body of this candlestick long added to my position having a very tight stop loss this is the time that i am about to finish my trading day so even if it's just a minute move i was okay with that so that one i got stop out at 12 25 and that one was the short tiny move to the long and that gave me a 40 box so with the time that i needed to wait for this one only 180 that's not really worth the time trading this that's why i'm just gonna be uh, calling it today it's a friday and no need to force any trade here okay next one is baba baba i took this one to the long baba is a gap up at the open it got up right here big rejection 94.2 boom what i saw here was a hammer first candlestick looking like a hammer although it has a big wick so that makes it not an A plus setup. Big, big wick right here. Since that's a big wick, I wouldn't use that as my stop loss. That would be too risky. So what I did was I entered long here at the break of this body of the candlestick. Stop loss very tight, just below the body of the candlestick, and got stop out, which is okay, just because it went still lower after that. So those are the time that you always gonna be so happy that oh, glad the stop loss is there. So otherwise, that would have been. Next one is, so that one, small loss right there. Did not see any trades at all, not until about this time. Around this time, 12.25, that's the time that SPY had a little bit of a bullish move because now that 12.30, SPY is now above the VWAP. So at that time, took a little bit of a scalp trade for those trades that I was read initially because looking at the SPY, SPY would have that influence to this individual stock and have that momentum for this to go up. So when I saw here that it's testing this level right here a couple of times, SPY is heading higher. So the trigger here is we have built that solid support here. SPY is trending higher. If SPY is not trending higher, I wouldn't even dare taking this trade. But SPY is trending higher, entered long, added to my position, trailing my stop. This is yesterday's closing price and it got stopped out, although it still moved all the way to VWAP. Totally fine with that. Just happy that I ended up green in BABA, even if this one was a red trade. So that one was the BABA trade. Okay, so next one. Next one is CCL. CCL took a while as well. Uh, CCL, all-time high today. Not really, but for the past, when was the last time it was on that? 2009 so that's been a while so ccl had been strong for a couple of days a couple of weeks actually what i saw with ccl and ccl i went long got up flush just like the rest of the stock first white candlestick went long stop out stop lost is just at the body of that um previous candlestick and stop out right there so first trade was a red red trade here now we have this hammer looking very bullish entered long here added to my position and this one i was just trailing my stop so did not look back not looking back right here and just heading higher high higher low so since i have my stop loss trailing it i will be kicked out at the first sign of reversal got reversal right here and i was all out so ccl small um green trade right there but that green trade did not last because i did had this one to the long again step out and then this one building my position and this stop out right here thesis was still valid so this one was a stop out thesis was valid still so i went long again added to my position added to my position 
it did not get me step out this time because my stop loss is this week right there when i saw that these are just profit takers i'm 50 50 and well 60 percent confident that this is profit takers because look at the volume right here so that's not sellers those are just those who were long here would like to take some profits there because the volume is not there so it's not the short sellers coming in there plus if you're gonna be short sellers will not gonna be lining up there because look at what the level is if you're gonna be shorting it at this level you are shorting it against the trend because now you have formed a double bottom so that's in itself is very bearish because double bottom strong at the open form a double bottom that means it's just building up that support there the momentum for it to bounce off of that double bottom is higher than for it to break off of that double bottom so i added to my position trailing my stop and i was all out right here did not get to have that move all the way to vwap but totally fine with that because that is a trade where it's starting to get a little bit late so what time was that that one was at 12 noon so finish with my ccl at 12 noon mu okay mu was a little bit of a fomo here just because look at the massive sell-off right here that could have been a good and one and done short but i did not see that coming it's hard you cannot really predict that that's gonna come because this one opened at 70.18 touch 70.38 so very strong at the open right at the open boom not even sure whether this one has a news so let's see uh third quarter fiscal report results today that it will hold third quarter earnings so it did have an earnings that's why it's also very challenging to trade earnings play so at the open had a massive sell-off you have the hammer right here a good entry year to the long was at the top of this hammer did not get to see that because i was trading a bunch of stocks so what i did was a little bit of chase here let's see if it's clear in the 15 15 we are above this moving average so long added to my position added and stop loss is below this body the body of this first body second body and was all out so this one was a loss long again a little bit of a move there but this is the frustrating part because yeah i was able to capture the little bit but there's not a big follow-through again there's not a big of that v reversal so this one was a red a little bit of a green trade right there and the big move that i was able not really a big move because i only got 18 bucks there but the move that i was able to capture with mu is the same time where i did some reversal with baba because at around 12 15 again the spy is having and showing that little bit of a bullishness because it's now heading to that VWAP and I took advantage of that make turn this trade to a green trade because this one was a red so we have that moving average there entered long added to my position trailing my stop and was all out right here just because I was red here it's almost just like a break-even trade so got myself 18 bucks with that I'll take it I'll take whatever the market is giving me so yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of trades that I did today. Um, I will certainly uh, trade, you know, those one stock a day rather than having this. I wouldn't change that for the world, having just uh, one stock and, you know, the one and done trade. But if that one and done trade is not there for today, then don't be scared to stick with your strategies and wait for that setup. Yes, it might be frustrating to see that your profit and loss is not doing too good, that you don't get those continuation, the one that happened today, it is frustrating. And that's, you know, you have to embrace the fact that that is how day traders are. You cannot predict 100% of the time. You just have to be in the highest probability that you can be off with. How do you do that? By lowering down your risk, um, solid strategy, your psychology needs to be in, you know, good psychology and profit to or reward to risk ratio must be higher or the reward should be at least two to one if you notice i haven't had that big of um reward to risk ratio because a lot of this since we don't have that big reversal a lot of this is a scalp trade so with spce and this is at my 229 this one is another frustrating stock to trade because it was so strong at the open it's currently still strong 17 percent but what I did was we have that consolidation right here. I went long. This one, I was using the 15 minutes. 
and with a, sorry, I was using the five minutes chart. So with the five minutes, this is if spy is not messing with us today. This is an A plus setup for a nine EMA trade. Look at how beautiful this is. You have the cup up. You have it open so strong. Touch the price at six. Had that sell off. This one is shortable, but I wouldn't dare shorting a very strong stock. It's up by 17%. So textbook setup here is you have tested the VWAP. At the VWAP, you have that inverted hammer. And then look at this one. It formed that double bottom. That double bottom, I took advantage of the strategy called 9 EMA here, where it will bounce off of 9 EMA. And it just rejected. So entered long here a little bit late. So long stop loss is just below the moving average, that 90 MA, and it, I got stopped out. So, okay, so that means it's still not ready. Went long again, added to my position, stop out again, long again, stop out, long stop out. So all this mess was a red trade. So what I saw here was, okay, we are now consolidating, just like what I've been doing in previous stocks, consolidating. So I've been adding to my position here, building up my position. With that build up of a position, boom, I got stopped out. So build up the position, got stopped out again. So very, very frustrating. So with this one, now looks like the volume is depleting. So big volume bar here with that massive sell-off. And how I see this is there is a bunch of stop loss sitting right here. And that's what the market makers did. Still have this stock move and all those stop loss got filled and you got that massive move there massive volume there once the seller looks like it's getting exhausted that's the time that i switch it up again although i tried it so many times here it looks very overextended now so that's the time that i switch it up to a higher time frame just so we get to silence the noise all right so higher time frame there we go All right, we have formed that low of the day. I started long right here, added to my position, added to my position, was able to have that pop at the 9 EMA. Once that 9 EMA pop, I was trailing my stop. It did touch here, almost 4.85. Did not get to capture that, but I was all out at the sign of reversal. So this move right here, was able to dig myself out of the hole with this, with this mess, with this move, because I was adding to my position and building up my position there. So just a small, Profit there with space at 229. So that one was the space trade. Next one is Tesla. Tesla, very small profit there to the short. Okay, so with Tesla, this is all time high today. The last time it was in that level was all the way back in, let's see, September 30, 2022. So yeah, almost a year ago. So what I saw with Tesla, I was in the middle of other trades here. I was long some trades, not working. So what I saw here was, let's look at the five minutes. That was my trigger here. All right, so Tesla looks like we're tapping out here. We have the R4 and this is yesterday's closing price. First candlestick to be looking red or to show some signs of weakness. I shorted it there. Stop loss is just a high of the day. I got stop out right there. So first trade was a red trade with Tesla. That's fine, Try, time to move on, look for a different setup, look for a different opportunity. What I saw here was 263.47 is acting now as the high of the day. You have the red candlestick, you have another one. So the good trade here to the short is at this level, 262.5, but I was in a different trade. But what I saw is this one did not even have the strength to retest this level in the city. So we, we do have the R4 with this lower low lower high and look at this one we're creating now a trend so when i saw that your r4 is there you have a trend right there confirmation that this one is now ready for a short since my short here did not work out so i entered short here stop loss is just beneath this inverted hammer added to my position trailing my stop again this is the frustrating part because just like i think the amazon one it did move to my prediction that it's going to be have that move to the short side, very bearish. But before it did that, it stopped me out. So 
okay, um, you know, no need to cry over spilled milk. I was just all out right here, was just um, happy that at least it was not a red trade because this one had me into a red since I added to my position here, was still able to come out green on this trade with 121.75. So now with that trade, I'm ending my day up by 3K. Um, and just a recap of what kind of day we had for, for a day trader. This is one of a challenging day, difficult day because there's not a lot of clean reversal. The market opened so strong. Most of the stocks did open so strong at the open, massive sell off. So at the open, it is the opposite of what the market have been doing before. What the market have been doing before is we see a huge gap up, that gap up have that continuation. Now, what happened was there's a gap up at the open. Instead of having the continuation, it just dropped all of a sudden. And that drop all of a sudden, it did not even have that reversal where in fact it did have a couple of false reversal. And those false reversal is what we call, you know, getting chopped. So you're just getting chopped because you entered long or you entered short and your stop loss get hit, gets frustrating. And that's the reason why I needed to step out of my desk for a while, switch it up to a higher time frame, initially to a 5, 15, and I was even looking at the 30 minutes just to silence those noise. Let's look at what the SPY is doing now. SPY is just up by 0.11%. And typically for a Friday, this is not unusual for SPY to be trending very uh, range, range trade. So from 440 or not even 440.5 to 443. So that's just $2.50 move with a SPY. Not a lot of movement at this time. This time is going to be the dead time to trade. I wouldn't encourage you or I'm not going to encourage you to open a new position at this moment just because there's no trade to, to take mu no trades to take there um amd consolidating as well and you can tell right at the gecko because what the spy is doing if spy is consolidating then expect the bunch of the stocks to be consolidating as well unless there's a news that's going to come up that's the time that you'll get ha or you can have those at least some catalyst for this stocks to move some shaking for the stocks to move but right now no catalyst no movements just in the range so yeah just uh step away from trading at this time also it's a friday monday is a holiday so long weekend a lot of day traders um you know ended up there trading early as well as those people who's not comfortable the swing traders who's not comfortable holding their position over a long weekend of course they will be closing their position so at this point you might just be trading off of you know algorithms that just makes the stocks move and does not really pick a direction. So, yeah. Um, so for now, ending my day with 3K and trading from 9.30 up to 1.30 or did my recap 1.30. The last trade that I did was space, which is at 12.45. So less than four hours of trading and yeah, done for the day. So thank you so much for watching and thank you so much again for availing the book as well as the course. Please feel free to put down under comments, suggestion, send me an email. We always want to improve our staff scanner, um, our online course as well. So we are open for comment suggestions. Please feel free to reach out to us. My email is mary at ecourseunlock.com. I hope you had a green trading day and yeah, don't let the market I'll get you chopped today. It's a Friday, long weekend. So I hope you have a great weekend and have your much needed rest so we can come back at it strong on Monday. So with that, thank you and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.